Yesterday I tested my blood sugar and it was 6.1 or 110. It didn't feel quite right so I tested again with the same meter just a minute later. This time my blood sugar was completely different. One of the two blood sugar readings was wrong. Your blood sugar reading can be wrong too and it probably is. So I decided to run an experiment to find out why my blood sugar readings are off and what factors impact the accuracy in real life. I needed a guinea pig for this experiment but I didn't find anyone willing to let me prick their finger over and over again. So I was left with no choice. I'm the guinea pig, as always. Our first blood sugar reading is gonna be our baseline. So I washed my hands with warm water and soap, dried them with a clean towel and pricked my finger. As you can see, the first reading is 6.6 .6 millimol or 119 milligrams per deciliter. This is a good baseline. As you could see, I took the blood sample for the first reading from my index finger. But let's see what happens when we use a different finger. For reading number two, not even a minute after the first one, I'm taking blood from my pinky finger. I expected it be to be the same, but it wasn't. Here we have to keep in mind that we're only taking a small blood sample for each test. The sample from each finger might be a little different, so you might not get the exact same number. As you can see, the reading from the pinky is a tiny bit higher, 6.7 or 121. But it's nothing to worry about, such a small difference is okay. For reading number 3, I'm gonna use a smaller drop of blood, and I put a little bit less blood on the test strip to see if that makes a difference. If you're like me, you might be tempted to do this sometimes, when we're not able to draw more blood from the finger and we don't feel like doing another finger prick. Now keep in mind every glucometer is different. Many modern meters don't require a lot of blood, but if you don't put enough blood on the test strip, they might give you an error code. But mine didn't give me an error code, and as you can see my reading with less blood gave me quite a bit lower number, only 6.3 millimol or 113 milligrams per deciliter. But for best possible accuracy, always make sure that your blood fills the strip all the way. Test reading number four. This time I'm gonna reduce the depth of the finger prick on my lancing device. Normally I have it in position number two, but this time I will move it to position number one to see if that makes any difference. The required depth of the finger prick is anywhere between 0.7 to 2.2 millimeters, but I heard somewhere that a more shallow prick might give you a little bit lower blood sugar number. So let's try this out. The finger prick definitely hurts less with this more shallow setting, but on the other hand, I have to push much more to squeeze enough blood out of the finger to be able to do the test. By the way, most lancing device makers recommend starting with a more shallow setting that still gives you enough blood to cover the strip. Increase the depth only if you have really thick skin, otherwise the finger pricks might cause unnecessary pain. As you can see, the reading with a more shallow setting is 6.7 or 121, almost identical with our baseline reading. For reading number five, I'm gonna use a different glucometer. All the previous readings were done with this contour meter, which by the way is a great meter, very reliable, and I use it as my daily driver. But for reading number five, I'm using one touch vario flex, which is my backup meter. Now, I said this many times before on my channel, and I will say it again. Two glucose monitors will almost always give you slightly different readings. Different meters use different test strips, larger or more blood samples. As you can see, the reading from the backup meter is 6.0 or 108. This difference is nothing to be concerned with because it's less than 15%. Even the FDA actually accepts the variance to up to 15%, plus minus 15% to allow new meters to be brought to the market. But if I were you, I would not go for the cheapest meter you find in your pharmacy because these often are really not that accurate. I can absolutely recommend any of these two meters that I use because I've been very happy with them. Now, if you have suspicion that your current meter is off by way too much, you can use a test solution like this one to see if your meter is working properly or if you need to replace it. Now, let's do reading number six. Before this reading, I washed my hands again and intentionally left my fingers a little bit wet. I didn't dry them off properly after washing them. So let's see what happens when I check my blood sugar with wet hands. Obviously the water on my fingers will dilute the blood sample, probably will impact the accuracy of my reading. As you can see, reading number 6 is only 6.1 or 110, quite a bit lower than the baseline, although these readings were taken within minutes from one another. So again, if you want to cheat and get a lower result, 
keep your hands wet, be my guest. But if you want the accurate blood sugar number, always wash and dry off your fingers with a clean towel. My next two tests will be done with dirty hands. And this is something you should definitely watch out for because I'm pretty sure that if you're like me, you don't properly wash your hands before every check of your blood sugar. For reading number seven, I'm going to put orange juice on my fingers. This can easily happen in real life when you peel an orange or touch other fruits or sweet snacks. I dried my finger, but I didn't wash it. And as you can see, ring number seven is quite a lot higher than all the other readings so far. 10 millimol or 180 milligrams per deciliter. The orange juice on my finger contaminated the blood sample. And the number on the glucometer screen is a clear false high. Getting incorrect readings is super frustrating for us living with diabetes. When we have wrong information, we can make wrong treatment decisions and we might get in a big trouble. The test with fruit juice only proved how important it is to properly wash your hands every time before checking your sugar. By the way, I have a really helpful tip for you. If you're ever suspicious whether a drink served in a restaurant is a diet coke which you ordered or a regular coke full of sugar, you can test it with your meter. When you test a diet soda, it will always read low. And when you test a regular soda, it will always read high on your meter. So when in doubt, check your drink with the glucometer. Leftover sugar on your fingers isn't the only thing that can mess with your readings. For reading number eight, I'm gonna show you what happens when I put lotion on another finger and test my blood sugar right after that. Because according to a study I read, some lotions contain an ingredient that can affect your readings for up to 60 minutes after application of that lotion. As you can see, the blood sugar reading after applying the lotion is 6.9 or 124. So not very different from the baseline reading. It turned out that the lotion I used didn't impact the accuracy. But there are different lotions on the market and some of them can cause false high blood sugar readings, so watch out for that. For reading number nine, I have ice cold water prepared in this bowl. I'm gonna submerge my hand in the bowl for a couple minutes, dry it off and draw blood while my fingers are still icy cold to see how this impacts my reading. I'm doing that because studies show that cold and heat can negatively impact the accuracy of your blood sugar readings. In theory, extreme cold can give false lows and extreme heat can give false highs. Before I show you the result, I just want to let you know that if you want to chat with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can join my community at the Patreon website. I respond to every question from my VIP patrons and I'm happy to share all the tricks and hacks that I learned while living with diabetes for over 35 years. By the way, I have 10 last spots available and once these are filled, you will never be able to join the VIP OG group ever again at this price. Another way to connect with me is booking a live coaching session. Links to both of these options are down below. Now back to my experiment. For this blood sugar reading, I'm drawing my blood from icy cold fingers. By the way, my hand was freezing after a few seconds in this ice bowl. I don't understand how some people can do a full body ice bath, but that's another topic. As you can see, reading number nine that was done with very cold hands is 6.7 7 or 121, almost identical as the baseline. So it didn't really confirm the theory, but maybe I just didn't keep the hand in the ice long enough because I just couldn't do it. By the way, if your hands are really cold next time you're about to do a blood sugar test and you're worried this might negatively impact your reading, try rubbing them together to warm up before drawing the blood. Now, as you could see, within less than 10 minutes, we did nine different blood sugar tests and we got nine different blood sugar results. Some of these results were dramatically different. Now, this goes to show that it's really important to use the right technique, especially if you have diabetes and you're basing medical decisions on that blood sugar test result. Always wash your hands and fingers with soap and water. Dry them off with a clean towel and make sure you're well hydrated because when you become dehydrated, the concentration of your blood sugar becomes higher, although there is not necessarily more glucose in your bloodstream, and this can make your readings inaccurate. Make sure that the test strips you are using are not expired. Expired test strips might give you false readings as well, 
Although when I tested it, I didn't get significantly different results when I was using expired test strips. Don't tell anyone I told you, okay? Watch out for certain medications that can affect your blood sugar readings. It's always best to ask your doctor about this anytime when you're prescribed new medication. Also, taking more than 500 milligrams of vitamin C per day can negatively impact your readings and cause them to be higher than they actually are. So don't overdo it with vitamin C. One thing you can do to be sure that the number from the glucometer you are getting is the right number is do multiple blood sugar tests and then average them out. This is a very effective way to avoid any measurement errors. Guys, I want to commend you for checking your blood sugars regularly and taking care of your health. And if you watched all the way here, I want to give you a little bonus tip. It's the one thing that I believe can lower your blood sugar more effectively than anything else. It's actually my secret weapon when it comes to fighting diabetes. And I will tell you all about it in this video. So go ahead, click it and watch it next. I will see you there. Ciao.